new lighting and everything for the night. According to the poll I put last month, I was supposed to be doing a 24 hour video of a day in my life. But then it required a little bit more planning and I really wanted to make a video. So this video is about US Emily and how I go about solving U world questions. And I will be focusing on how you're supposed to approach each question and the most effective way to retain maximum information, how I make flashcards, how I make notebooks, etc. And I'm hoping that this video really, really helps you. My approach to this video is by sampling out one question from U world and going about telling you how it works. So yes, I really, really hope this helps you. Let's get started. I have this question on my screen. And when I first look at this question, there are two things that I do. One is read the age and gender of this person. So it's a 56 year old man. Okay. And I've highlighted this. I make it a point to highlight every single essential information in your word. The second thing I do right after reading the age and gender of the person is go to the end of the question and see what the question actually asks, which is which of the following is the most likely diagnosis in this patient. Now, this is a relatively easy question because making a diagnosis is much more easier than answering a follow-up question with the diagnosis because for a lot of people what happens in U world questions is initially they're able to make a diagnosis but they can't answer the sub question related to the diagnosis or they're able to answer the sub question but they're stuck between two options so as you progress through U world you're going to get better at it the reason i've read the first statement and the last statement in this question is because when i read the first statement with the age and gender i can go in a general direction of what disease is most prevalent in elderly people and what disease is more prevalent in males right and now when i read the last question this saves me a lot of time because Sometimes what happens, there's so much unnecessary information in a huge paragraph of these U world questions that you end up realizing that the actual question did not require all this information that you've been sifting through, which is why all I know right now is that I have to make a diagnosis somehow, right? If the question was, what is the most likely treatment, then I would think of it in that manner. So now that I have uh, gotten a basis to my question, let's start reading further. A 56 year old man is evaluated for fever on post-operative day three. So the complaint here is fever and this is post-operative. The moment I think of post-operative, you have to come up with all the complications that can happen post-operatively in a elderly man or in any person post-operatively, what complications can happen. This will come by reading, solving more questions and you know, going through clinics on a daily basis. So don't worry too much about it. This is just me trying to describe to you how my thinking is right now. He just had a coronary artery bypass surgery for multi-vessel coronary artery disease requiring four grafts. Now this information could either be essential or non-essential. This diagnosis can be a direct complication of a CABG surgery or this could be a direct complication of surgery in general. So I'm not going to highlight this part. The only thing I've highlighted right now is his age, the complaint and the duration of the complaint. Patient is still intubated and receiving mechanical ventilation. He, he has a history of diabetes, hypercholesterolemia and hypertension. So I'm just going to assume that these are all predisposing conditions that he has. I'm still not highlighting them yet because I don't know if it's relevant to my diagnosis. His vitals are fine except his temperature because he has a fever. His BMI is 28, he's slightly overweight, that is predisposing him for more complications after surgery. So each piece of information in this question should direct you towards some kind of diagnosis and you should be wary enough to know which piece of information is not essential. So don't overthink on it. Examination demonstrates coarse breathing sounds bilaterally. Not exactly sound like a normal finding, so I'm going to highlight this as well. Heart sounds are normal. Patient grimaces during palpation of right upper quadrant. Now, this one thing has given me the biggest hint to the diagnosis, in my opinion. Patient grimacing during palpation of right, right upper quadrant is classically the Murphy's sign. Now I'm going into the lab values. Now see, in your world, you have the lab values that are provided to you separately but it's always more beneficial for you to memorize lab values, at least the normal ranges, 
so that you can eliminate things quickly and you don't have to spend a lot of time searching for that particular lab value but yeah of course there are a lot of lab values that i also do not completely know the normal ranges so that is when i refer to the lab values that are given by u word so if you look at the lab values hemoglobin slightly reduced for a man 10.8 is not normal platelets borderline but they're normal leukocytes are increased bilirubin is normal alkaline phosphate is 100 it's normal ast alt are not elevated amylase is normal okay so now what all are we eliminating here we are eliminating any kind of liver pathology by ast alt we are eliminating any kind of pancreatic pathology with amylase we are eliminating any kind of obstructive jaundice happening here because alkaline phosphatase is normal and we're looking at cbc because cbc tends to give us a lot of clues the only important clue that we got here is that leukocytes are increased okay so now fever leukocytes are increased murphy sign is positive it's seeming like acute cholecystitis right that is inflammation of gallbladder now if we get in more information like this is an elderly male who has undergone a stressful period of surgery and has been mechanically ventilated for such a prolonged period of time after taking all these facts into consideration a some vague as diagnosis in my head right now for me to point out what the actual diagnosis is from all these six options i'll have to go through the option and start eliminating them okay it's very important that in you word take time with questions take one minute for 40 questions i usually take 50 minutes to 55 minutes So take proper one one and a half minutes for big questions and try to eliminate it. Some questions you'll look at it and you'll be like, yeah, this is the answer. But the best kind of questions are the ones where you wait it out and you rule out each and every option until you're left with one. A crazy nice thing about U World is that you can actually keep eliminating options whenever you want. So let's see. A calculus cholecystitis. What do we know about A calculus cholecystitis? A calculus cholecystitis there is no need of a gallstone to cause gallbladder inflammation so we're just going to keep this option we're not going to cut it out second option acute cholangitis so in acute cholangitis uh if you remember the triad charcot's triad there is jaundice but in this patient there is no jaundice and for acute cholangitis to happen which is inflammation of the biliary duct system you need some kind of obstruction and we've already ruled out that there is no sort of obstruction the alp is normal and there is no jaundice i'm not going to strike this out because i always i localized it to a gallbladder pathology so i'm just going to wait and look at the other options as well acute pancreatitis this is not going to be acute pancreatitis it does not present this way there is epigastric pain that radiates to the back there is increased amylase levels none of it is there in this patient So we are not going to go with acute pancreatitis even though that this person has fever. This see they did mention that this patient had coarse breath sounds bilaterally so I can definitely be confused and mark it as right lower lobe pneumonia but I'm just going to go by the basic logic that there was bilateral coarse breath sounds which could be due to any other reason maybe post surgical maybe due to um, he's been ventilated right yeah it could be because of that So I'm not going to go with just right lower lobe pneumonia. So I'm going to strike that off. Right sided pyelonephritis. Now for pyelonephritis you will of course like liver pain is flank pain. So liver pain you will not feel it in the right upper quadrant. It's a it's liver is in the lumbar region. You'll feel flank pains. And you don't really have any other um, you know urinary symptom here. There is no hematuria, nothing happening. So I'm going to strike this off as well. subphrenic abscess so this is one option that i got pretty confused with subphrenic abscess right that is also in the right upper quadrant of the abdomen and there is fever there is leukocytosis but it's just that subphrenic abscess is not it, sometimes i just go by the vibe of the question okay that uh, for me right now this question i just don't feel like it is subphrenic abscess because murphy sign is clearly positive and even though other factors are really lining in uh, abscess is mostly because if there is any kind of abdominal sepsis like peritonitis etc but there's actually not a lot of clues that point towards that and the most important part is um after surgery it's more likely to have an a calculus cholecystitis because this happens because of gallbladder stasis and gallbladder stasis is common in stressful situations like surgery and i 
I'm not really sure of the other conditions, but let's read about it. Let's try to mark this answer. And I have a good feeling that it's right because I've eliminated all other options. So the only thing that is present right now is a calculus cholecystitis. And if I'm wrong, that means there was something wrong in the way I was thinking. So I'm going to mark the answer. Okay, it's correct. It's correct. Uh, see, in U world, at least in the beginning, I used to get, um, in step one, I used to get like 40% correct out of 40 questions. So you will get questions right, you will get questions wrong. But the most important part about U world is that you will have to review each and every question, be it right, be it wrong. I got this question right. I've gotten like two or three other questions in this block which were completely wrong. So what I do is that I start reading it and every time I come across a new concept, I make a flashcard about that concept. Every time I come across chunks of information that I'll have to buy hard, then I make a notebook out of that. Question that I think I got wrong. And uh, I basically go through all of this. I can highlight whatever I feel like highlighting. I can bookmark the question here and I can make notes. Like I can select this entire thing and put it to my notebook. Now, I've already done this question, so I'm not going to put it to my notebook as of now, but you can see that I have all these categories to make my notebook in. And uh, if you can see, I've made a flashcard for this as well. So yeah, most of my flashcards are based on concepts. So I've written pathophysiology of small bowel resection causing a gallstone here and I basically wrote the concept behind it. So whenever I do this flashcard, I will have to explain to myself why small bowel resection causes gallbladder stasis. When I go here, I have my notebook. And my notebook has been divided into all these categories where I store mostly just tables and images for me to refer to right before my exam. Now let's go to flashcards. Let's do study now. What do tonsillar and uncle hernia do to pupils? I think this is in reference to dilatation of pupil because of one and uh, non-dilatation of the other. I'm not very sure, so let's look at the answer. It causes fixed mid-position pupil to... So yeah, I clearly did not know this answer. And after reading it once, I'm going to ask it to give it to me again. Right? Ciprofloxacin is... a inhibitor or inducer i think it is an inhibitor yes it causes toxicity and i have used foul language so this was good so i'm gonna ask them to give it four days later i feel like one should at least spend five minutes per question wherein one minute you solve the question four minutes you spend on reviewing the question making notes making flashcards you can also make a separate mistake notebook that I did for my step one, wherein every time I got a question wrong repetitively, I'd write it down in a separate notebook and revise it right before my exam. But uh, since I'm doing step two right now, I, I and step two is probably one and a half year or two years later, I don't feel the need to start with my mistake notebook as of now. Once your block is done, you can go and see how many questions you got right, which subjects you're better at, which subjects you're not that good at, which subtopics like anatomy, physiology, pathology are you good at, which are you not good at. So you can focus on them accordingly. So I always make sure I see how I performed in each and every test. Most important thing about UWorld is that it's a learning resource. It's a review resource. And all the percentages and the marks that you get in UWorld, genuinely, they don't matter as much as let's say your NBME paper. Learn quicker methods to read through the question, learn quicker methods to eliminate answer. And every time you're stuck between two options, always go for the option that you first thought of because your gut feeling is right for at least 80% of the time because this gut feeling that you call is basically your subconscious memory telling you that this is the right answer because you've read this some do teen saal pehle and it's coming back to you so what you think might be a tukka or a vague guess is probably something your brain your brain is actively doing so if you're ever confused go with the first one but that doesn't mean you're going to make hurried choices in answering these questions you need to be systematic about it you need to eliminate you need to make sure that you know 
why each answer is wrong not just why the correct answer is correct and that is the whole point of reviewing the u world extra stuff that you get i want you to know that this is a very important resource and it is very expensive so i want you to make complete use of it. because i personally believe that you can pass step 1 step 2 just by using u world